Hello, everyone, and welcome to Economics and You. I'm your host, Mr. Samuelson. Today's lesson is on why we save. Deciding to save is an important step for anybody, and people do this in order to make future purposes, uh, purchases. That's why we save our money. And there could be several reasons for those future purchases. Could be planning for emergencies, making a big purchase like a car or a house, planning for your education, or maybe just having a low risk place to store your money, a place where you know that it's not going to disappear on you. Now money saved in a bank or with other saving institutions uh, have an advantage in that they will earn interest over time. So you'll actually be increasing the amount of money that you have in that account so long as you keep it in that account. Now money being saved it's a really good thing for an individual to do. It allows you to make those big purchases, plan for your education and emergencies, etc. It's also good for businesses and banks. Banks make money by loaning money. And they loan money primarily to businesses and individuals. And so as a bank, you want to make sure that people are depositing money into these savings accounts so you can loan them out to businesses. And that as a whole is going to stimulate your economy and be good for everyone. So saving money in the economy is a good thing. Now, there are trade-offs in different sorts of saving plans that you might choose. There are three basic ways to save your money. This is different from investing um, because saving doesn't carry the risk of investments. Savings plans include savings accounts, money market accounts, and time deposits or CDs. Um, each one of these are primarily designed to save money over time. Each one has advantages and disadvantages, which we'll go through in this lesson. The savings account is the first I wanted to talk about. A basic savings account has a very low interest rate. Sometimes this covers inflation, sometimes it doesn't. Um, examples right now that I was able to look up are savings accounts going at about 0.9% uh, with interest. That is, you earn 90 cents for every $100 that you have deposited. The inflation rate right now is hovering around 1.5%, so you are actually losing a little bit of the store of value on your money in a savings account. Right now, they're not covering inflation, um, but at least it is reducing the impact of inflation on your savings. An advantage is that there's low or no minimum deposits. You might have a minimum deposit of you know, 100 bucks, uh, but that is a fairly low threshold for having a savings account. Another advantage is that depositors can withdraw money at any time. It's very easy to access your money. Uh, and there's also no penalty for withdrawing your money. So your disadvantage is your low interest rate. But your advantages are it's easy to open one with a low or no minimum deposit, and that you can withdraw at any time with no penalty. A money market account is a little different. A money market account has a much higher rate of interest. You can see interest rates of 3%, which will beat inflation, all the way up to 5%, depending upon the amount of money that you've put into it. Now, 5% is not a wonderful interest rate, um, and 3% is certainly not good. You can do better things with your money. But again, these are savings plans, and they are completely safe. A disadvantage of money market over a savings account is that there is a minimum balance requirement. This is almost always above $1,000, um, but in lots of them you'll see $2,500 uh, minimums as well. So for a money market account, you have to have money in order to set up that account, whereas a savings account, that's not true. Uh, and another advantage is depositors can withdraw their money at any time. There's no limit on when you can with withdraw and you won't have a penalty for withdrawing. So your advantages here are when you can withdraw, no penalty for withdraw, and the advantage of a higher interest rate than a banking account, with the disadvantage of needing money in order to start one. Now a time deposit, which is also called a CD, CD stands for Certificate of Deposit. Um, so technically they're called time deposits, but what you receive for it is a CD, a Certificate of Deposit. These have the advantage of having the highest interest rate of the three. Um, as you can see over here, interest rates might go as high as 12%, uh, but 12% is going to cost you a lot to get that rate. 
more typical would be down in this lower range of your 6 to 8% on smaller deposits. But 6%, that's a good return. You're never going to get a 6% on a money market. 8% is a pretty great return, but there are disadvantages in this option. Um, they have no or low minimum deposits. They do have minimum deposits. Um, this spreadsheet suggests a thousand, but there are certainly CDs that you can get that are less than a thousand. But depositors can withdraw money at any time. That remains true. But you're going to pay a penalty for withdrawing early. So if you buy a $5,000 CD that you're going to keep for 180 days at six months, you'll earn 7% interest on that. That's a good interest rate. But if you need to withdraw that money before the 180 days, you'll get the original uh, 5,000 back, but you're not going to get the interest on it. You'll lose the interest. That's a pretty huge penalty for withdrawing early. So you really do not want to withdraw um, from a CD, a time deposit, early. You wanna make sure that the money you're putting in there can stay in there and stay in there for the entire duration. So how do we know this money is safe? I kept saying, you know, money in these account types of accounts are safe, you're not going to lose it. This is because we didn't always have it this way. The Great Depression became as long and as deep and as great as it was because when people had money in banks and the bank failed, people lost all their money. Savings evaporated overnight. If the bank had loaned money to a company that was a weak company and that company couldn't pay it back, well, banks loan your money. And that meant if you went to the bank to withdraw your money, the bank didn't have it anymore. So this was a huge problem. So to protect both people and banks, the government created something called the Federal Deposit Insur Insurance Corporation, the FDIC. And the FDIC will guarantee your money. It's going to protect you. Uh, to banks that follow the rules of the FDIC, that is their keeping a certain amount of cash in reserve, they're not making totally risky investments, the FDIC is going to protect them. And in the event that they do go bankrupt, deposits are protected from losses of up to $250,000. So if you have a bank account and it's $200,000 and the bank fails, the federal government will write you a check for $200,000. But there is a limit, $250,000. So if you have $400,000 in that bank, even spread amongst different accounts, but it's at one bank. If that bank fails, the federal government is going to write you a check, not for $400,000, but for $250,000. So little advice to you, if you ever have more than $250,000 in savings, make sure it's at two different banks. Go for Bank of America and Citizens Bank and spread out that money so you never have more than $250,000 at a single bank. Just play it safe. All right, that is all for today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you learned something and farewell.